Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update from me, Martin. Um, I'm an Inkscape developer, uh, developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me for yet another update. Uh, this week we have a lot more bugs for you. Well, they're not bugs anymore, they're thoroughly destroyed. And um, yeah, first of all, I want to give a big shout out and a big th thank you to all of my sponsors on Patreon. Um, thank you all so much for your continued support. Uh, when I started this project to see if it was possible to serve user interests by making myself available for essentially for hire by average everyday users, um, I didn't actually know how uh, successful I would be. And it's only really thanks to your involvement, uh, your participation in this pro project that allows me to be available to everyday Inkscape user needs uh, rather than large corporation needs. So thank, thank you all. Um, let's kick off with the things that I have fixed. So if you're un unaware, we're currently in a bug fix release cycle. This means that we are quickly running up to the beta, which should be released in one week's time. And then there's a couple more weeks for translations and a bunch of other things and last minute fixes. And then the final 1.2 release will be done. So that's where that's where we're at. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been going to the Inkscape uh, issues tracker and looking at high priority issues. And then I've been sorting them by their uh, last update status, reverse order, which means that I've been looking at the oldest high priority bugs. Some of these are two, three, four years old. They've been around for a while. Um, but it's important that we revisit these issues and don't just forget about them because they're at the bottom of the pile. Some of these are the are the hardest pro problems to fix because they, if you think about it by, by attrition, the easy stuff gets picked off from, from the top and uh, the harder stuff tends to settle to, to the bottom. Um, so I wanted to tackle these problem problems because I think some of these are user experience issues that really do impact the way people use Inkscape. And um, the first problem that I fixed was smooth nodes. Now, if you have a smooth node and a line, um, that is a fixed line that's connected to a smooth node, and you selected them in one order and then moved them, uh, everything would be fine. If you selected them in the opposite order and then moved them, everything would not be fine. The smooth order correction code was being run in the wrong place the wrong time. Correcting that was actually quite difficult because it meant reorganizing how that smooth node correction code worked. Um, but fixing it means that Moving objects that contain these smooth nodes should be a lot more predictable and a lot more consistent. So that's fixed. Um, I fixed a problem in the text layout. Now this is a very subtle problem, but it happens when you have a stroke, that is a line that goes around the outside, on text, but you've only stroked some part of the text inside of a text box. So right, say you have a piece of text, you select the middle word, and you add a stroke just to that middle word, the um, selection bounding box and export boxes and stuff would never include that stroke, right? So that meant that it would always be cut off in some way. So recalculating how text bounding box calculations work to include stroke internally into the text layout instead of exter externally, uh, actually removed a bit of code for, for that because it seemed inefficient. Uh, that's fixed. Um, this is the, the one that I spent quite a lot of my time on, which is the percent stroke modification, right? So you are, so you've selected multiple objects that have a different stroke each. The, the fill and stroke dialog will by default show you a percent. So you can modify this by percent. Changing that percent did not reflect at all what value you would actually end up with. It was running it multiple times it was uh, not adjusting for the scale of the um, objects. It was adjusting the dash, the mitre, and the stroke at the same time, 
So if you selected two objects, one had a dash and one didn't have a dash, and then tried to, you know, change the, the mitre, then they'd all end up with a dash or that none of them would end up with a dash. Uh, essentially, this code was, um, the idea behind behind this code originally was that you would just update all three of these, these values at once. And it never really assumed that you would be editing multiple objects at once. So pe people just patched on top and patched on top and patched on top with extra assumptions. These assumptions didn't work, uh, so it had to all be rewritten. That took a bit of time, and a big thanks to Nathan for actually going through and testing a lot of the um, problems, because when you're editing stuff like this, a lot of prop problems can sneak, sneak in, because, again, it's all about what the code assumes. Uh, but we've got the vast majority of those issues fixed. Uh, that's been merged. Um, I fixed a, a small UX issue. This actually didn't come from the high priorities list. This came from Twitter. A uh, Twitter user complained about being able to select smaller pages that were inside larger page pages. And um, those smaller pages would often be underneath, like you couldn't select them. So I actually had to re-engineer the code to change what its assumptions were about like what the best page to select was, it will now always try and select a page that is inside of another page. Um, it won't automatically just pick the first one in in order as it was doing before. Um, let's see what else have I got. I'm trying to read my notes and honestly, I'm, I'm reading this particular line. I'm going, what did I even write again? Um, Oh, yes. Okay. So this is about the uh, page tool again. There's a missing piece of user experience, which is you cannot change or could not change the orientation from landscape to portrait and portrait to landscape um, in the in the toolbar. You now can. It's built into the size drop, drop down. It now correctly remembers the portrait mode, the orientation mode. Uh, you can select different sizes and it will remember the or, the orientation. The little icon that flips between the two of them, it's on the left-hand side of that drop, drop down, much like several of the other objects. It's not its own button because it is incorporated into the size editing, uh, but it's a, ni it's a nice feeling tool, which is nice. That Getting that fixed felt good, actually. Um, I actually also spent time... Uh, fix um, organizing some of the the artwork for the about screen con contest. Um, the about screen contest is finished. We have a new graphic. Uh, congratulations to Chris. Big thanks to Marin for doing a lot of the the, the organizational work. Uh, to Tim for ho ho holding all the votes in the vectors team, and um, yeah, and also Chris for coming into the, the the vectors team and like creating modified versions for different form and formats. He's the first artist ever to um, put in a little bit of extra time to help the the vectors team prepare the different formats that their artwork will eventually end up in, um, and that's just that's just really re really great to see. Um, that actually brings us to in other Inkscape news. So this is. Um, stuff that happened in the Inkscape pro project that I didn't do, um, but it's important for you to know. So this is a uh, Vahab Malik fix has been fixing the three D box crashes. Um, PBS, who you probably aware of, uh, he fixed that ups upstream bug in Pan Pango that caused the font uh, the font dialog to crash on you. Uh, that I didn't fix. If you remember two weeks ago, he fixed that upstream. Big thanks to him. He's also been fixing some other stuff in scroll events. Uh, Raphael has been uh, reworking the paint service and server dialogue. The paint server dialogue is actually much improved because of those fixes. In fact, it didn't even work at all. Um, he's also fixed some undo issues and um, some issues with the layers di dialogue, not being able to move to the very bottom of the pile. Uh, Nathan Lee has been fixing. Nathan Lee tests so many of everybody else's code as the uh, head test, te tester, but he also gets his own fixes in too. And he fixed the spray tool uh, with color overlaps. I think he's also fixed some other stuff too, but the, it's, it's, it's not on this list. Um, but that's about it for this week. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, please, please do share these videos. 
the more people that I can reach, the people who use Inkscape, who could do with investing in a programmer like me to help make Inkscape better, uh, the more sustainable this will become. With your help, we can make this uh, project work for the long term. And uh, thank you for jo jo joining me. Uh, we're going to be doing some more fixes next week, but the releasing the release of the beta will be happening as well. So do let me know what things you think need to be fixed. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you all next week.